Grade 12 Physical Sciences, November 2025. If you're looking for all the solutions, go to allpasspeters.com. I've done question two, and I'm doing question three. I'll do most of the videos. But if you want all the solutions to the question paper, go to allpasspeters.com. You're going to be writing life sciences soon, geography as well, for very curated study material and past question papers go to allpasspeoples.com. When it comes to life sciences, at allpasspeoples.com, the nature of the material that is there, the quality of the study material is unfazed. You cannot get it anywhere else. I can assure you of that. If you want very cool, a very useful life sciences study material, go to allpasspeoples.com. Let me start with in time. Let's solve the problems. 3.2, using... Equations of motion only calculate the value of P. What is happening? A ball is projected vertically upwards from the top of a building that is 5 meters high. The table below shows the magnitude of the velocity of the ball at three different times during its, its motion. Using equations of motions only calculate the value of P. So what is interesting about P? At our time P, the magnitude of the velocity is 0 meters per second. We know that that happens at the maximum height just like i've demonstrated just like i've highlighted in my course right so take a look at this we have vf which is equals to zero meters per second that is at the maximum height if we're taking that as the final part of our motion and the initial velocity at t is equals to zero is 15 meters per second upwards right so P is delta T, which we're looking for. Obviously, we have A, the acceleration. Vf is equals to Vi plus A delta T. We were expecting this equation to be the very first in question 3, related to the maximum height. Vf is 0, Vi is 15 meters per second, taking up as positive, obviously, plus acceleration minus 9.8 delta T. Delta T is equals to 1.53 seconds. We have solved so many problems in vertical projectile motion. We know that if the initial velocity is 15, it will take 1.53 seconds to reach the maximum height. Right? We know because we have solved so many problems in preparation for this exam. 3.2, let's do 3.3. .3. The ball strikes the ground 3.3 seconds, 3.36 seconds after it was thrown upwards. Calculate Q. So 3.3 seconds is corresponding with the velocity of Q, the time where it strikes the ground. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for Vf. We're looking for Vf, which will be our Q. So now we need to decide which part of the motion we're considering. We don't have the height above the ground, right? We have the height of the building. So it makes sense for us to use the height of the building. So, if we're using the height of the building, Vi is 15 meters per second upwards. And then delta Y will be minus 5, as we are looking for the time it strikes the ground. Okay? Uh, we have the acceleration, obviously, 9.8 meters per second. So, Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta Y. These variables that we have allows. So Vf squared, that's what we're looking for. Vi squared, that is 15 squared, plus 2a minus 9.8 delta y minus 5. So Vf is equal to, so the square root of 15 squared plus 2 minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 5. Vf is 17.97. So Vf is 17.97 meters per second. What are we looking for? Calculate Q. Okay, so we don't really need that. Uh, what is Q? Yeah, Q is the <laughs> magnitude of velocity. So we don't need the direction. We're just looking for Q. So there we go. But we know that it is downwards. 3.3. 3.4. The ball bounces to a maximum height of 3 meters after it struck the ground. Is the collision with the ground elastic or inelastic? Explain the answer without the use of calculations. Just to make this more fun, I'll leave this question to you. In the comment section, let me know. Is the collision elastic or inelastic? Obviously, 
if you have been a member of my Patreon, if you had my course and you've been watching the videos, this is a very easy question for you to answer. So, chemistry, you are writing on Monday. Go to the link on my profile, click that link and check out the course. It's going to really help you. If you had the course, I don't see any reason why you should get anything wrong. Right, 3.5, let me know the answer of 3.4 in the comments. 3.5, sketch a velocity versus time graph for the motion of the ball from the time it was projected until it reached the maximum height after it bounced. Okay, so let me just have my axis and then I'm going to make sense of the equation and have the velocity time graph. Okay, um, what's happening? Okay, there we go. So, from the time it was project, uh, projected until it reached maximum height after it bounced. Okay, so it was projected at 15 meters per second, right? And then obviously we expect it to... Okay, that line need to, needs to be straight. Yeah, so let me use the rule. We expect it to decrease until... It reaches the maximum height so this is the maximum height uh, so the maximum height is at which t uh, p p is 1.53 so here we have 1.53 that is the time it takes to reach maximum height um, obviously we are gonna have the line extending as now is going down and the velocity is negative right so we need to also indicate time p. So time p we've indicated there. Uh, so this is the time p. That is p. And then the initial velocity, I've indicated it as well. Uh, velocity q. Velocity q is the velocity at which we strike the ground, right? 17.97. So we just need to extend the line further. And then we have minus 17.97. Uh, obviously here yeah, we have minus 15 somewhere here yeah because as it passes uh, the building on its way down so that is the velocity time graph which question do you want me to do next let me know in the comments don't forget to get all the solutions to the question paper go to allpasspapers.com